guys, I'm giving you another little review of Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Because uh, I saw it a couple of days ago and it's been all the hype. Now, what could I think of it? I think it's a okay film. There's good, there's bad, and therefore let's get into it. So, let's start with the story of this film. Um, Fantastic Beasts and where to find them, as, as everyone knows, is a kind of in the world of Harry Potter in a different, you know, that universe but different place. Um, and you've got this uh, story based around a guy called Newt uh, Scamander. Uh, and he's this guy who has a suitcase of Fantastic Beasts uh, as the title of a the film there. And he goes to New York because he's found this guy who wants to sell him uh, an animal. We see at the start of the film this whole thing of, you know, Fantastic Beasts aren't allowed or mystical beasts and not allowed to be owned by people. They kind of push, you know, slamming down on that. Um, and he obviously comes right in the middle of all this, um, and ultimately he accidentally um, releases some of these uh, fantastical beasts in New York, um, you know, and you've got this uh, one character from the FBI, kind of, so like this, you know, the Magic Association who are trying to keep all this secret. Um, and no magic who kind of gets swept into the situation, um, and you've got them kind of trying to get these fantastic beasts. There's also a little side plots going on. And ultimately get them, and you know the whole thing of them trying to keep a secret um, from you know ordinary people. Um, and it's good. It's good in this bad in this story. I think the main place it really strives is mainly at the start. Um, I could have made those uh, is decent, um, but I think my favourite bits are generally when it's this whole thing of them trying to catch these fantastic beasts, you know, um, and them trying to. Like keep it secret in these really quite hilarious situations, um, especially one situation where you've got this one creature who loves gold, and he's constantly you know getting away and trying to get into these banks and stuff like that, um, and that's really fun. And I did like the whole element of trying to keep it secret from people with all these beasts going around, which was really interesting. Um, the problem with the story is I feel it tries to do too much, and ultimately, lots of your moments just don't feel that impactful. Like the moments when they're with these beasts and the and kind of a relationship between the three main characters is really fun. But this whole side plot with um uh Pacifius Graves, you know, something sinister going on, it felt a little too rushed. There wasn't enough of a development there to make the kind of the final moments too impactful um in that regard and obviously didn't really stick in your memory as a, an amazing villain, you know, he was, he was still sinister. But I felt he needed a bit more development uh, on that regard. I mean, also the guy who is a sort of guy called Credence, and he, in a way, he's got this kind of a bit of a dark magic, um, let's say. Oh, but basically, you know, it's the thing with him and Perceivable Grace, and I felt like that was also a bit rushed. It was like, it was done, it was there, it was done it too quick, and it didn't really even impact for me. So that's kind of the main problems but overall the story is decent but it could have been so much better if I feel like it wasn't so rushed. I know this whole thing of these anti I guess anti um magic you know um people who are almost revolting it's it's uh, quite interesting but again that's a bit which is just kind of there for a bit and just felt like it's left you know I know it's going to be more films it's going to build up but you know as a standalone film I felt there were bits where it went a bit weak and the pacing was a bit off but it was still decent, but the thing for me which kind of elevated it um, were the four main characters who were kind of going around trying to get these fantastic fantastic beasts and I've covered a little bit about as well what's going on with um, uh, kind of this thing which is happening in New York where people are getting attacked by this sort of dark force. Um, and that, that's quite interesting, they, they're chemistry really good. I love New Scamander as this guy who's kind of awkward but charming uh, in the same way, you know, um, and seeing him with like, react with all these different fantastic beasts, because they literally, like, you know, you can feel their relationships is really interesting, especially with some of the more, uh, one of the small things, like a little leaf, and, you know, he's always got one in his pocket, and um, some of the stuff between them is really funny, and again, this character who's, like, this loves gold and shiny stuff, and he wants to just get it all, and, you know, him always escaping, and you know, Scamander trying to get him, it's just really funny. Um, and again, uh, this guy, Jacob Kowalski, who's this non-mage, you know, non-magician, gets sucked to it and seeing his reactions, especially when they go into the suitcase and you see all these different animals, it's really quite funny. And he, he provides a lot of good humour, because it's for him, he just doesn't know what the hell's going on. 
Um, and again, I really liked, um, you know, poor Patina Goldstein character there. You know, she was uh, she was quite cool. I liked her. Good again, good banter with kind of the characters. But I think Neutral and Jacob Kowalski for me, like Star Wars, they were they were two amazing characters in it, and they really help me enjoy the film. Um, and again, in the same way, have some awesome characters. I felt a lot of the characters, again, were just... I know they had to fit a lot in, but I felt they could have, like, developed them a little bit more. You know, honestly, especially one of the villains, again, in this, in this um, film, so at the end it just didn't feel that impactful. That's the problem. But, you know, for, for the banter, for the kind of relationship, and for, like, uh, the three, three four main characters... Uh, who are trying to get these beasts, it's quite entertaining, and that was probably the best bit about the film for me. Um, in terms of the sound, music, you know, it's pretty good, the wand effects are really cool, um, I like the music in it, it didn't ever feel out of place. And in terms of the effects, the effects were really good. I gotta admit, that was just some of the moments just kind of pretty blew me away, pretty good, especially as I said, when they went in the suitcase, or the CGI world of all these fantastic beasts, and I was like, yeah, this is what the movie meant to be about man. Um and yeah some of the wand effects were really cool. I like how it was a bit more faster um on that, you know, it's not quite as in everyone shouting out their spells really loud. It was more like, it felt like machine gun ones or something like that. It was, was kinda of cool. Um I love I loved in terms of like the acting kind of going back to that, the New York accents and this were just awesome and <laughs> really funny seeing like these creatures having a New York like a you know goblin having a New York accent and stuff. It was it was awesome. So for me, the main highlights were the characters, um, of, well, the, I'd say Newton Scamander and J.P. Kowalski, the characters, you know, the, the actors played them really well. Um, and, you know, kind of when it focused more on the Fantastic Beasts. So overall, it's a decent film. Not as good as I was expecting, and I reckon there were bits where it kind of got, it tried to handle too much in a way, um, but I reckon it can become even better, and, you know, we'll see what happens with the next films. But that's my thought on... Fantastic beast and way to find him. Um, still worth seeing, but it, it, it's it's not the greatest, but it's still a good film. Um, so worth seeing, guys. And I will be back with another another video very shortly. Bye.